Okay, so just a little bit on designing your trim sheets. Now, a lot of people struggle with how do you come up with how to actually apply the detail on the trim sheets. And there's a few different ways of doing that. Now, if you've got, gathered a lot of reference already and you've got a good idea of what you wanna make, you could make a map in Photoshop or a very basic trim sheet in, in Maya and bake that down. And just in Photoshop, grab some of the elements of your scene and just place them in each one of them trim sheets so that you have a good idea of what you've got here and what, what extra room you need if you want more details than what you've got here. So you can see with that beautiful cabin that we showed earlier, you can see how he's broke down his different pieces from his reference and applied them to a trim sheet. Okay then, so you can make your trim sheets in Quixel, ZBrush, in Substance Designer or Painter, or even just straight in Photoshop. But we are going to be using Maya for ours it offers great flexibility, it's convenient, and it's pretty easy to do. And also you can kind of make your trim sheet alongside your model so you can quickly reference sizes and scales and add additions to your trim sheet without flying through different programs. So let's make a new Maya scene and we can build our first asset. Now to make this a little bit more interesting, we are going to make some sort of vending machine, maybe a dirty industrial one, think kind of cyberpunk style. So here I have a few references that I've gathered. So I wanna make something like this. Now we're gonna keep it pretty simple, uh, but basically if we look through these, these are most likely painted by hand. I mean, most assets will be painted as a single texture sheet. When you look through these images, it's quite easy to, to kind of start breaking these down into a potential trim sheet. And we've got quite a few options here, quite a few references to look through. So first of all, we want to set up our Maya scene. So let's make sure the grid is correct. And again, we want this to be 1,110 so that it's easy to transfer our stuff into UE4 and keep to the same grid settings. And we also wanna make sure we've got a color that's not too distracting, but allows us to easily see the different sections on our grid. You also just need to double check and make sure that in settings preferences and settings that your working units is centimeter. So next we wanna drop in our SK mannequin. And this will just allow us to always keep a close eye on general scale of our models. Next, let's set up some layers so that we can build our trim sheet and our asset in this scene without getting confused between the amount of models on the scene. So I'm just gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna name that layer trim sheet. And then I'm gonna create another layer and I'm just going to call this machine. So now we can start to lay out our base trim sheet. So we wanna go here and grab a plane and we wanna drag this out in the scene. Now, we need to do this in accordance to our texel density. So let's talk a little bit about texel density. So one of the things we do with trim sheets is squash and stretch the details onto our models. And this is an area that needs some care taken with it. Some stretching and squashing is okay when we consider the benefits of this workflow, but we should still try to keep this to a minimum. To help with that, we can try to keep some proportions in mind when we model. If we split our trim sheet into sections of a certain grid size, we can try to stick close to that section size when modeling. Now, it's not so bad if you gain texel density, but it is noticeable when you scale areas and lose texel density. This will result in ugly pixelated textures, and this is all the more noticeable when next to areas of greater density. So consistency is key, but using our decals wisely and tiling textures will alleviate some of this. So let's draw out our trim sheet. We're going to make this 400 by 400. If we are applying a 2K texture, we can assume this will cover around four meters in our game. So this should give us a good indication of the size of our sections. Next, we are going to lay out a few basic shapes. This will help us plan out our trim sheet. And I'm gonna do just this just by grabbing a cube, holding X to drag it out into the grid. And I'm just gonna drag out my first section across here. Now I'm not gonna to go too small with this section, but you certainly could have smaller pieces on your trim sheet than this. And I'm also just going to delete the bottom face of this as it will make it easier for modeling later on. We don't need the back face on these trim sheets. And I'm also just gonna grab my main trim sheet and just move it down ever so slightly just to give myself some breathing room against the grid here. Now trim sheets can be confusing at first, but the more you test them, the easier it gets. People always ask, how do you know what to put on them? And the fact is, most of the time, you don't. You have to take it one step at a time. You can certainly plan it out if you have strong references or concept work, but the best way is to make a base sheet with predefined sections and use that for the first pass of your modeling. You can come back in stages, removing sections, 
rearranging as your scene starts to fully form and then revisit any time for the final detail pass. So I'm just going to duplicate this, holding X again to snap to grid and move that across. Now I'm going to have two of them size and then I'm going to grab that across again. This time I'm going to grab the outer face and still holding X, I'm going to make this one bigger. And again, Okay, so I think I'll delete this one and duplicate this one and just make this so that the result is half of the trim sheet used at this point. Now, again, I don't know if I'll stick to this, maybe they'll change later on, but it's good to try and stick with a layout that is quite strict at first, and then you can start to modify that as your items take place. So we've got half this trim sheet left here, and there's a few different things we could do with this. We might want to use some area on this to create some larger panels. So again, we can just duplicate the ones that we've already got and just drag them faces or vertexes out, snapping them to the grid. Okay, so we've used a good proportion of our trim sheet here, and we've got a base layout. And down at the bottom here, you might want to leave this section open just for your decals or little trim areas. Now I often use leave a section completely blank um, just in case I want to add a little bit of more detail to this model later on. Maybe it's after I've made the second or third model in my game that I feel like I want an additional thing or piece. So I always try and leave some blank area just so that I can, uh, just so that I've got some flexibility with my modeling. This is just the way I've laid this out. You might want to do large panel sections, vents and stuff like that. You might want to take the tiling trim sheet here and have it at the bottom. There's no solid layout and there's no reason to have it one way or the other. Um, it's just what you prefer. Okay, so I'm just gonna select all that and make sure that it's in my trim sheet. Add selected objects. And then we can turn this on and off so it's not in the way. Now we can begin to model our machine. So I'm gonna model it off to one side here so that I can see my trim sheet and the machine at the same time. So the other thing we need to make sure as well is that our base tile for our trim sheet is one-to-one -one on the UV tile, which it is here. So we can also make sure that we name this and I'm going to name it Vending Machine VM Trim Tile. And then I will export that out as an FBX. And so that tile is then ready to be used in Substance Painter. Okay, so now we have a trim sheet and tile and we have the scene set up, ready to start modeling our little machine and test out these trim sheets and tiling textures.